Hi, I'm Nick with DuramaxTuner.com. On the table in front of me here, I have turbochargers from a variety of year Duramax trucks. And what we're going to do today is go over the different iterations of trucks and how the turbochargers changed over the years and what some of the drawbacks and benefits are of the different turbochargers. I'm going to cover some interchangeability stuff and just give you a general overview of how things work. So, on my left here, I have the LB7 turbocharger. And this is a wastegated turbocharger, meaning it has a, a wastegate diaphragm on it and a wastegate in the back, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, it's the simplest in operation. You have this inlet air horn, which bolts on the front. Air comes in, goes into the compressor wheel, and uh, the compressor wheel is driven by the turbine. You'll notice if I turn this turbocharger around, you can see the turbine. This is called the exhaust side of the turbocharger. Okay, Exhaust comes off the manifolds and is pressurized into the uh, exhaust housing here. Goes in, comes up, and then drives the turbine. Okay, As the turbine is driven, that shaft is connected to the compressor wheel. All that energy from the turbine being driven spins the compressor. The faster it spins, the more air it draws in and compresses into the charge air system. So that's your boost tubes, your intercooler, your Y-bridge, all the parts that, that bring compressed air to the motor. The whole premise of the turbocharging and the diesel is to have extra air to the motor so the truck can make good power at low RPM and uh, get you that torque that you really appreciate from the Duramax. Okay, so the cool thing about, uh, about the LB7 turbocharger is that it's the only turbocharger in the series that is, is not electronically controlled and uh, has, a, has a wastegate. So what do I mean by wastegate? Well, in order to control boost, uh, the engineers have designed a, a mechanism in that once, exhaust, once boost pressure gets to a certain level, this diaphragm activates and this flapper valve, you'll see, opens up and relieves drive pressure on the turbine. So any pressure that was in here will, instead of, instead of going to drive the turbine, will be diverted through a different area of the exhaust housing and come out through here. So let me, my, my simulated boost source here, if you're going to do this, be sure and uh, Turn your regulator down. Okay, so as boost comes up, you can see that wastegate mechanism actuate. Okay, and as that wastegate mechanism actuates, we're diverting exhaust gas around the turbine and out into the downpipe so that it cannot create boost. The energy cannot be taken from the exhaust gas and made to drive the turbo any harder. Uh, typically, this wastegate set at 24 or 22 to 24 pounds from the factory. There's some cool stuff you can get from the aftermarket, I like PP's boost increase valve, that if you install and line in the wastegate hose, essentially bleed off that boost pressure so that it can't activate the diaphragm. And when it can't activate the diaphragm, then the wastegate stays closed a lot longer and we get a higher boost number. Okay, I'll do a simulation on that here for you too. So things just move a little bit slower. Okay, so where we might have got 24, 25 pounds from the factory, now we get 30, 31 pounds of boost. Okay, the temptation on some wastegated turbochargers has been to take a pair of these and put them on the wastegate line as such. Okay, cool idea. Keeps the diaphragm from activating the wastegate and makes the turbocharger make a lot of boost. Unfortunately, this pushes the turbocharger into its overspeed zone. When that happens, the compressor wheel goes faster than it's supposed to be. Pieces of it hit the cover. They fly apart. Eventually, you have catastrophic turbocharger failure. That's bad. Um, so try and avoid that. If you want more boost, use one of these, not these. That extra boost will get you to the max power output of the LB7 turbocharger. And that max power output's about 530 rear wheel horsepower, and it's really limited by the size of the inducer of the turbocharger, which is less than 60 millimeters. If we try and make more boost than that 31 pounds, like I said, the turbocharger fails, and we start pushing hot air, etc. So if you wanna make more than 530 rear wheel horsepower, expect to put a larger turbocharger on. If you're okay with 530 and great drivability, then a stock turbocharger will suffice. Next time, we talk about the LLY turbochargers, the LBZ and LMM, 
and what changed between the waste gated and moving on to the variable geometry. I'll see you then. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching.